All right, so here's a particular type of problem that is on your homework for um, section, I believe it is 4-4 in our textbook, which is basically taking what we have learned about trig functions in the unit circle and applying it to some different types of problems. So this one says find the values of the six trigonometric functions of theta given the function value and constraints. And here's the type of thing they would give you is they would give you, for instance, that sine of theta is one-fourth and the cotangent of theta is less than zero. All right, so first off, I'm going to look at this because it's important that I understand less than zero, greater than zero are just saying positive versus negative. So this is just telling me the cotangent is a negative number. All right, that only happens in certain quadrants. So this is a way of telling me what quadrant I'm in. Now the other thing about it is cotangent is the co-function of tangent. So whatever sign the cotangent has is also the sign of the tangent. So that's the easiest way to look at this is realizing that my tangent is going to be a negative number. So I'm looking for what quadrant my tangent is a number, negative number in. Okay, so here's the thing. Tangent is positive here because remember tangent is sine over cosine and here positive positive they have the same sign if you put a positive over a positive you get a positive so here the tan would be positive same thing over here if I put a negative over a negative I would get a positive so the tangent is positive in quadrants one and three so if this is telling me the tangent is negative then I'm either in quadrant two or four because that's where the sine and cosine have different signs so therefore, when you put sine over cosine, you would get a negative number. Now, the next thing, though, is when they tell me the sine of theta is 1 fourth, they're telling me it's sine. They're telling me whether it's positive or negative. They're saying it's positive. Sine, of positive, sine is positive in this quadrant, not in this quadrant. Remember, the cosine goes with your x value, or is your x value, and your, your sine is your y. Your sine is your vertical. So positive sine means I'm going up from the x-axis. So we are in the second quadrant. So that's the first thing I need to get out of this, is that we're in the second quadrant. The next thing is what it actually says, that the sine is, <coughs> excuse me, 1 over 4. Well, that means that opposite over hypotenuse is 1 over 4. Here is opposite, here is hypotenuse. So I need to use the Pythagorean theorem to find this side. So x, let's say x squared plus 1 squared equals 4 squared and I get x squared plus 1 equals 16, x squared is 15, so x is the square root of 15. But we're going to the left here, so it's negative square root of 15. Now I have everything I need to have to be able to say, to do exactly what they asked me to do, which was find the values of the six trigonometric functions of theta. So we already know that the sine is 1 over 4, and that means its co-function, the cosecant, is 4 over 1. The cosine is opposite, excuse me, is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's negative square root of 15 over 4, and that means the secant is the reciprocal of that. So I flip that over, when I flip that over, I have to rationalize, so I'm going to get, let's see, negative 4 root 15 over 15. Notice again, the co-functions have the same sign as each other. So if sine is positive, cosecant is positive. Cosine is negative, secant is negative. And last but not least, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So 1 over negative square root of 15. So again, you have to rationalize and you get negative root 15 over 15. The cotangent is the reciprocal of this, but to me it's easier to remember that before I rationalized this, I had negative 1 over square root of 15. So when I'm flipping that over, it's just negative square root of 15. And those are my answers. Okay, let's do another one. This one says the tan of theta is 0. And then it says this.
Well, what on earth does that mean? Well, it's, it's just another time, another way of telling me what quadrant we're in. This is less than. Another way of telling me what quadrant we're in. So let's think about this. Pi over 2 is straight up. 3 pi over 2 is right here. If we're saying that theta is between those two, going around from 0 here, we're saying it's somewhere in here. So this is just a way of telling me that I'm in the either the second or the third quadrant. Okay, so I'm either in the second or third quadrant, or, or, there is an or here, or I could be actually on the x-axis. Okay, tan is zero. Well, the tan is zero means, if you think about it in terms of a fraction, it means the same thing as the tan is zero over one. That would mean my sine is zero and my cosine is one. Okay, but that's over here, so that doesn't work. Is there anywhere on this side that would work? How about this point right here? The tan of this particular angle is going to be sine zero over cosine, which is negative one. Zero over anything is just zero, so yes, that's where we're talking about. So now I know that this is what my angle is and I have to figure out the sine of that angle. Well, we just said it's zero. The cosine, it's negative one. The tan, we already know is zero. The cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine. If you put one over zero, if you flip zero over one over, you get one over zero, and that's undefined. The reciprocal of the cosine is going to give me negative 1. Negative 1 means negative 1 over 1. If we flip that over, it's still negative 1 over 1. And the cotangent, just like the sine, if we flip over 0, we get undefined because we get a, a 0 in our denominator. And so those are my answers. All right, let's do one more. By the way, sometimes they won't give you a little funky way of telling you what quadrant you're in. Sometimes they'll just say, theta is in quadrant four. If they do that, I'm not gonna do one like that for you because that's the easiest type. There's no figuring out what quadrant does this mean I'm in. They just told you, quadrant four. All right, so here's another one where they're telling me what quadrant I'm looking in in a different way. They're telling me the tan is positive. That alone is not enough, but notice, they've also told me that the secant is negative. Okay, so let's think about where the tan is positive. Remember, tan is sine over cosine. So for sine over cosine to be positive, sine and cosine have to have the same sign. If they're both positive, that works. If they're both negative, that works. So the tangent is always going to be positive in the first quadrant and in the third quadrant. Now secant, remember, goes with cosine. So saying that the secant is negative something is the same thing as saying that the cosine is going to be negative. Cosine comes first. It's your first coordinate. It's the x-coordinate. So if it's negative, that means going to the left, which means we're in the third quadrant. So you want to draw your terminal side in the third quadrant, and it really doesn't matter exactly where in the third quadrant. Now always remember, make your triangle with the x-axis. Do not go over to the y-axis for your triangle. So this is your theta here. Secant is negative 4 over 3. That means that the cosine is negative 3 over 4. So that means adjacent is negative 3 and hypotenuse is 4. Okay, remember the hypotenuse is negative, is, excuse me, is never negative. That's why the negative has to go here. It's also because we're going to the left. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I put this number adjacent, this number hypotenuse. Now I need to do Pythagorean theorem to find this side. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 16 minus 9 is 7. So this is square root of 7. Is it positive or negative? If we're in the third quadrant, everything's negative except the hypotenuse. So now I'm ready to go. I can go ahead and put my cosine and my secant because I already know them. Those were given to me first. Secant, excuse me. My sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's negative square root of 7 over 4. Flip that over, and I get negative 4 root 7 over 7. Take the time to rationalize it if you need to. 
tan is opposite over adjacent, so that's negative square root of 7 over negative, or over negative 3, so it's just root 7 over 3. And flip that over, and we get 3 root 7 over 7. I've rationalized it there, so if you need to work that out, please do. And that's it.